Today we'll be taking a look at Void Linux. This is yet another GNU slash Linux distribution, but it's very different from some of the other distros that I've shown off lately. For one, it's not based on Arch or Debian, it's just based. It has its own package manager, its own build system, and its own repository. It also gives us the option to use run it instead of systemd as our init system. In fact, systemd isn't even in the Void Linux repository. Its use is very much discouraged. And there's actually a lot of packages that aren't in the Void Linux repository. So before you decide to install this onto your own computer, I would suggest clicking on the Packages tab on voidlinux.org, their website, and check to make sure that all of the essential packages that you need are going to be available in the repo. Or you should get comfortable with installing those packages that aren't in it from source. Now, if we go to the download page, we can see that there's several options for downloading Void Linux. So first you wanna select your architecture. Most likely you're gonna be running 64-bit, which is the default one, but Void does have images for 32-bit as well as the ARM platform. And another cool option that Void gives us on the 64-bit architecture, which most distros don't, is that we can use a different C library than glibc. You can use muscle instead, uh, which is much more minimal and has a much cleaner code base than glibc. And since Muscle is in a GNU project, you could possibly use something like Void Muscle to build a GNU-less Linux system, as long as you can find replacements for the GNU core utils that works on Void. So let's take a look at this one, the Void Linux Muscle XFCE edition in a virtual machine, and if I have time, I'll show it to you guys on the ThinkPad as well and record it boomer style. So here is Void Linux Muscle booted live. You can see that I have a plain XFCE desktop here. Uh, now, this looks like a just works distro, and it kind of is, as you'll see in a moment, but we don't have an installer to click on right here on the desktop. So what we do have is an NCurses guided installer that we can activate from the terminal. Uh, first, we have to become root, and the root password is void Linux, by the way. And I should probably go ahead and make this a bit bigger. Now, to activate this guided installer, you just have to type void installer, and you can see we're brought to this NCurses menu now. Uh, so we're gonna enter the void. So let's start by setting up our system keyboard. And as you can see, the default setting is Dvorak, uh, which is special. People who use this keyboard layout, they are a bit high functioning, a bit too incomprehensible for the QWERTY normies like me. So I'm gonna choose US. Uh, and for network, it uh, selects the appropriate network card automatically. And it's gonna just test to make sure DHCP is working. So it's working, we're done with that. Uh, so now for source, I'm going to choose local. So this is going to install from the local ISO image uh, because network is just going to do the base system only. And host name, we'll call it void. Time zone, let's see, do we have, oh, didn't mean to hit that. There's no Boston, that's too bad. Root password, and user account. All right, and these are pretty good groups for us to be in already. We're in a KVM group too which uh, I would use on hardware, but probably not on my ThinkPad either, because it's only dual core, doesn't even have hyper-threading. All right, um, bootloader. Okay, so for this, I'm just going to do one partition. Uh, so this part is gonna be, I guess, the trickiest part of the whole setup is you actually have to do uh, your own partitioning here. So because I'm in a virtual machine, uh, I'm just going to use DOS. I'm not trying to emulate UEFI or anything like that. If you're on a newer computer uh, with UEFI, then you would use GPT. And we'll do new. 
And uh, like I said, I'm not going to do swap either, so I'm just going to use the whole thing. Uh, primary. And that should be all we have to do. Right. And quit. Okay, now we'll choose the file system. And we'll do ext4. And mount point will be root. Yes. Okay, done. And then we'll install. Yes. All right, wow, this is actually going pretty quick. probably the fastest Linux install that I've ever done, at least in a VM. It took, I think, just under two minutes. Yeah, we'll reboot the system. Okay, and it does that automatically. And then we'll boot to void Linux. It also boots really quick too. I want you to take a look at how quickly run it boots up here. So here is our desktop. Of course, this is standard XFCE, no additional theming or anything like that. It looks exactly like my XFCE Gentoo setup, except that this bar is at the top and not at the bottom where I usually put it. Now let's get right into what makes Void Linux different, the package manager. So we're using XBPS, uh, which is pretty fast. Uh, it's a lot faster than most other package managers. And let's actually do a full update of the system uh, and see how long that takes. So it, what we're gonna do is sudo xbps install, and then it's s to sync and u to update. And then we'll put in our password. And oh, it looks like the xbps package itself actually needs to be uh, updated first, so we'll go ahead and xbps install u xbps uh, and run that as root. That's pretty cool. I like that it tells us the amount of disk space that's left every time we run that. That's really helpful when you don't have a lot of space on your machine, like in a VM. Uh, so now let's go ahead and do that full system update. And okay, it looks like we're downloading about half a gig of files. So I think I actually will pause the video while we update this. It's probably gonna take a little while. So I was reading up about XBPS on docs.voidlinux.org while the system was updating. And it appears that there is a tool called XCheck Restart, which is part of the XTools package that Void recommends we run after doing a full system update to restart all of our services because XBPS doesn't do that for us. So let's go ahead and install Xtools. And then when that's finished, we'll go ahead and run Xcheck Restart. And uh, let's see, it should be run as an unprivileged user. So X check restart. And yeah, all of those services are restarting. Okay, so uh, we can see here 
since I've got the uh, docs open. Other commands that you can use with XBPS. So there's XBPS query, uh, and then RS to search for packages. So why don't we try that one out? XBPS query, RS, let's try NeoVim. Okay, so it looks like NeoVim is available. Why don't we try Emacs? That's available for anyone who wants to use it. Uh, Gedit or Jedit, that's available as well. Let's try something that might not be in here. Maybe Steam. Do people play games? So it looks like Steam actually is a thing on Void Linux on most machines, but you have to enable the non-free repo to get access to it. So that's how you would do this, except I forgot that I chose the muscle version of Void Linux. So yeah, the muscle version, definitely not going to have Steam in it. Um, but yeah, that might be a thing. XBPS query, uh, that's how you can check for any d different type of packages that you might want to install if you didn't check them through the web portal before. But obviously this is uh, much more efficient. You can also install multiple packages at once, like uh, with most package managers, XBPS install. Uh, let's try three that I actually want. HTOP, uh, NeoFetch, and why don't we do Vim as well? And we'll download all of these. Shouldn't take too long, and there we go. Uh, so why don't we get some footprinting done on the system here? Let's see how much, oh, should probably close Firefox first to get more of an idle uh, setting. Also, the version of Firefox we're running is the extended release one, 78.7.1. Uh, uh, so it looks like there's not a much newer Firefox available on Void Muscle. All right, so let's do some footprinting now. Let's do an HTOP. And it looks like we're using 260 megabytes of RAM, which is very, very lightweight. I mean, even for an XBPS system, like I said, I just uh, recently de redeployed uh, my Gen 2 XFCE machine last night, and that is still using, I want to say about three, maybe not quite four, probably about 300 or so uh, megabytes at idle. So yeah, this void muscle is uh, even lighter than that. It's got to mostly come from the fact that it's using um, just muscle and not glibc. It might also be because we're only displaying to one screen instead of three, because um, of course the Gen 2 machine is installed to physical hardware instead of running as a virtual machine. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Let's also see how many packages we have installed. And get a look at that nice NeoFetch output. Let's try it again. Okay, so we only have 553 packages installed. So yeah, definitely a very, very minimal uh, setup. Now another big difference between Void Linux and 99% of the other GNU Linux distros out there is we're using Runit as our init system instead of systemd. Runit is a lot more minimal. It has fewer lines of code and it doesn't handle as many processes or use as much RAM as systemd. And the command syntax for Runit is also very similar to systemd. Uh, so I guess those are two uh, init systems that are pretty, pretty easy to switch between. Uh, for example, instead of using systemctl status dbus to get the status of dbus, you would just use actually a much shorter command, sv status dbus. And um, oh yeah, we have to run that as root. So yeah, you can see it's giving us the uh, process ID and uh, how long it's been running. If you wanted to restart the service, you could just do sudo sv restart dbus, uh, or if it wasn't started at all and you wanted to start it, you would do sv up dbus, and then if you wanted to stop it, sv down dbus. So that's the part that's a little bit uh, different because with uh, systemd, I'm pretty sure it's systemctl start and then systemctl stop to start and stop things. So pretty easy init systems to switch between. Uh, now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend run it for Linux newbies. Uh, it kind of depends, as long as you haven't become dependent 
on some of the things that have hard dependencies on system D, like snaps, for example. Uh, if you've managed to avoid that, then you could probably use Runit or OpenRC or any other alternative uh, in its system, at least for now, because unfortunately system D is becoming much more integrated into the Linux ecosystem than most people like myself would want it to be. So yeah, under the hood, there's a lot of differences between Void Linux and other GNU Linux systems. On the surface though, this is just your standard uh, XFCE desktop with nothing else really installed. There's a uh, image viewer for internet. Of course, we've got Firefox for um, multimedia. We've got the uh, Paroli media player. I guess that's a, a more standard XFCE one. Of course, MPV is my favorite media player. Uh, and then under system, we've got the Thunar file manager, a bulk rename tool, uh, the task manager, and of course the XFCE terminal. Those are the defaults and HTOP is what I installed. All right, so it looks like I did have enough time to try it out on the ThinkPad. So we'll go ahead and boot Void Linux on hardware now. And this is the same one, XFCE muscle. It's starting up pretty fast. Again, one of the great things that I love about Run It over system D is definitely when I had Mint installed on this computer, it didn't boot up as quickly as this. Okay, and we'll go ahead and get started with our installer. Uh, make this bigger first. And let's make it actually one smaller. All right, and we'll become root, and we'll run void installer, and we'll change our keyboard to US because our power level is not high enough for Dorvec, and we'll use uh, Ethernet for a network because I was having some trouble getting Wi-Fi working. Use local again, host name, Void, time zone, America, and uh, New York for East Coast. Set our root password. User count, Kenny, Kenny, and our password. And we'll use the default uh, settings there. And just to install bootloader, so this is going to be uh, SDA. And we'll partition our disk. So this is going to have the uh, partitions for Linux Mint on it right now. Uh, we'll go ahead and just delete all this. Okay, so we just have one terabyte of free space and start with new. And I actually will create a, um, I'm gonna create a um, swap space for this. So I'll do, let's see, I have eight gigabytes of RAM. So I only do a four gigabyte swap, swap space. Okay, and we'll make that primary. And I need to change the type to Linux swap. Uh, oh, it's right here in front of me. Okay, and then this we're gonna do just the same way uh, that we did on the virtual machine. And um, yeah, looks like we got everything set. Go ahead and write. Yes. Okay, partition table's been altered. Quit. Now we'll change these file systems. And let's see, SDA, that's our four gig. So that's going to be Linux swap. Yes. And then 
this is going to be our root. We'll make that our mount point. Yes. Okay, and for some reason the file system type doesn't update here in the uh, partition. I don't know if I noticed that or not in the um, virtual machine, but I guess that's a small little bug. Okay, and we're done. And then install. And let's see if this is much faster on hardware. like about a minute and a half as well on hardware so very very fast uh, Linux deployment with void Linux and yeah we'll go ahead and reboot the system and uh, I'll pull this USB out Okay, so now this should boot us into the uh, system. All right, and here is our itty bitty grub menu that you can barely see. Let's go ahead and boot into Void Linux. All right, and then we'll log in. And there you go. So that is Void Linux installed to a virtual machine as well as a ThinkPad. You gotta leave a like for that. Also leave a comment to hack the algorithm. Peace out.